about configuration KDUMP in SUSE Enterprise Linux 11 and I'm running SV version 4. So the first thing what is KDUMP? So KDUMP is nothing but a features in Linux kernel which we have and that features allow us to capture the memory log into a file and the file which we call VMCore. So example in scenario which you have a system is hung and or probably system is crash and you wanted to capture the data to see or analyze it later what caused the system crash and that VM core file will allow you or to analyze this, the, uh, analyze the data and you would be able to see what was the reason and that is why KDMB is very important and you should be able to or you must need to enable it in your all production system so for configuration a KDUMP in SUSE Enterprise Linux system is a little different than Red Hat Enterprise Linux. I have already prepared a video and it is there in my YouTube channel. If you are looking for Red Hat as well then you probably have that in my channel. And this video is going to about the SUSE Linux KDUMP configuration. So I have listed few of the steps here which is uh, simple steps which you need to follow and you would be able to uh, configure KDEM. So let me just go and follow those steps. The first steps is your package installation. So you need to ensure your KDEM packages are installed in your system and if those are not installed you would end up having issues so you should ensure your KDEM RPM this one and make dump file this one and the other one is KEXC2 so this file this RPM is very important looks like uh, this RPM is not there in my system let me just do a query for this file XC tools it is that actually I had to say tools here but instead of that I just say tool that is why it said no RPM found anyway so other all these three RPMs are currently installed in my system and I don't have any issues regarding RPM so please ensure this three RPM is installed in your system and once you install the RPM the next step is you need to specify or reserve some amount of memory for crash dump for your crash kernel so why it is required it is required because when your system will crash and you should have some amount of memory in a uh, memory to capture the log if you do not have the memory then the VM core file will not going to generate so currently if I do a free minus M and I would be able to see my current memory information so it is about 1 GB which is inside my system so what I'm going to do I'm going to reserve a 128 MB of memory for crash term and the next step I'm going to tell you what we have to do so in SUSE Linux we need to edit the file which is menu.list under this location and let me go inside this file and here in this kernel line you would be able to see a default line for crash kernel and the format we can use a two format we can use the first format is something like this 256 MB it is using starting from 128 MB so this is one format which you can follow and there are other format also you can do it so let me just try the other format 128 MB I'm reserving starting with 64 MB probably okay so 64 MB so this is what you have to do so now once I have done this it has to kernel has to notify that and init rd image has to written again saying that 128 MB space is reserved for cache kernel so for that what I have to do is I just need to reboot my system I just save my file and let me reboot it it will going to take 
hardly one or two minutes let me just pause the video and come back when my system is up and running so my system is back now and I just wanted to check whether the reservation for my crash kernel which is 128 MB is done or not and I can able to see that information by grabbing my DMSS file and let me just do a 128 and if I run this command I can able to see that the reserving 128 MB for starting from 164 uh, MB for crash term so that means my reservation for crash term memory is working fine so the next step is I'm going to show you let me just go inside this directory and quickly open the kdump file kdump ok so now the next step is I need to ensure that there is few parameters which is enabled in my kdump configuration so let me just take a one more session here and maximize the font size a little and if I run this command I can able to see the command kdm command line is nothing specified currently and it is also the same directory is already specified so where default it is going to store your var crash vm, VM core file so this it is it is a default location you can be able to change it if you wanted to and the dump level it is currently 31 it is basically used for compression if you are using a bigger amount of memory in your system th then it will do a much compression so it's a, always a good idea to specify 35 uh, 31 the dump level so more the bigger value the compression will be more and the dump format would be LJO. so now I need to specify two option here the kdm command line I need to pass some parameter and also I need to specify kdm command line here so I think uh, so and one thing one thing uh, one line is enough I think this if you update we don't need to do the other one so either you update command uh, kdm command line or kdm command line event so both are same so in whether you update this or this so let me just do uh, uh, edit on this let me just go to the kdm configuration file just config kdm and let me search for that line so here it is And let me just double check the other option whether it is showing correct. So kdm initiate reboot. So that looks good. It should reboot. And the other option which is default location in var crash. Uh, crash. So that is fine. And you can keep the file. It is saying the five times. So at, that is depend on your requirement. If you are if you'd like to keep it for five times, then you can keep. Otherwise, you can reduce to one or two or just a minute I think I have a system it is going down let me just anyway so actually I my VSP got disconnected for some reason anyway I got that uh, screen again so here the other option is the verbose output is fine the dump level is compression 31 which is recommended and the format is LJO that is also recommended it is fine so you can check other options as well like the compress the other you can do compress you can specify or you can specify LJO or ELF so I would recommend you to use LJO so I think that's it we don't have any other thing to check I believe so let me just anyway go through the file again just to ensure everything is fine ok so I think we are done so let me just save that file and once I save this file I have to restart the service so there is a service inside let's see 
it is start with both dot kdom and let me just check the status it is running and let me just restart it the changes which I have just made in the file it will just take effect until time and now it is restarted let me just switch the service on so that when my system is up or when my system is reboot the service comes up along with them ok dump csk config I think I need to specify boot dot kdump right and we can also verify the service whether it is loaded or not uh, this is the kernel actually uh, this is the driver actually whether it is loaded or not you can check this file let me just check it clear the screen and it is one which means it is loaded and everything looks good so next step is I need to test it whether my kernel is functional or not so to do that I need to use some command which is related to sysrq so let me just paste the command here and increase the font size a little probably ok so here let me show you the default so I think right now it is 184 so default is which is 184 and it is currently means that what the information is holding by memory is in it will going to sync before the system sysrq run so anyway what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enable it one for enabling and now I can also sync it manually running this command sysrq trigger so it will manually sync what are the information holding by kernel right so everything seems to be good now so now next command is c which will going to crash my kernel and it will going to dump the data so let me just enter this command and let's see how it goes So it should not take much time because there is very less memory currently running in the system. It will not going to take much time to capture the VM core. Okay, so anyway, it captured it and now I can see the system is in the process of rebooting. and if this went good I would be able to see a VM core file under var crash and also there would be a DMSS file output in that location so let's wait probably 30 seconds we will be able to log into the system and launch a terminal Okay, so my system is up. Let me just go to now var crash and do an ls. So currently I can see there is a directory with a timestamp if I do a date and it says the same timing 8 12 past 10 and here it is saying about 12 past 11 which is 1 minute ago ok so let me just go inside the directory and here I can see there are files so this is the file which has the information about your system crash and there are other text files like in DMSS 
if you do a D message, so the same output you would be able to see inside this location. And readme have some information about at what time the system is crashed. Probably I can show you that one. And you can see this time it crashed and the simple information about the kernel and the dot and dump format information. So that's it guys. So it, this is the VM core, VM core file which you need to analyze and to analyze that we need something called debug and for kernel and currently in my this setup I don't have that I have uh, debug info kernel installed in a CentOS system and I have already prepared a video which I have given the link in this description so if you wanted to see how to analyze a VM core file you'd be probably need to see that video so that's it for this video i will come with next i will come with more videos like this in social linux red hat and centos system if you feel this video is informational for you or the content which i have showed you is useful then please subscribe my channel and also hit like if you feel it is good okay so that's it thank you so much for watching have a good day see you next time